you welcome once again to the Vista Edu webinar. Today is um, 27th April, so this is our April free monthly webinar, and I'm seeing more people joining. We will start at exactly 7:10 because um, we have seen some of you are uh, now joining us. Uh, today is International Day, International Girl in ICT Day. So um, we are really glad to have you on. So enjoy the woman music by Simi. Yeah. <laughs> So in the meantime, as we wait for more people to join, kindly go on Google right now and search for Vista Edu and please shoot us a review. This helps people to locate us easily on Google and also it also boosts our reach so that more young people and especially tertiary level students can hear of us and also be impacted by what we do at Vista Edu. Thank you so much and yes. Let's let's keep um, waiting. Thank you. Thank you all so much for sticking with us. And you're all warmly welcome once again to the April Vista Edu Monthly Webinar. Uh, my name is Apele Okai. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Vista Edu. And today on Vista Edu, we are here for the session called Mental Health for Students. Mental Health for Students. I believe some of you may have seen this communication be running all over the place. And today I have the singular honor of inviting a very special person. And she has once been my roommate in the University of Ghana when I was in level 200. And she has also been a great uh, inspiration to me personally. So um, you're only welcome SNM, Dra. Thank you so much for being here today. Okay, I believe you can hear me very well. Thank so you. Yes, I can hear you very well. I hope you can hear me too. Okay, great. So can I can hear, hear you. Clearly? Yes, I can hear you very clearly. So before mm. you begin the session, I'd like to read an introduction of who we are coming to interact with, who our speaker is. And I believe you are going to love this introduction. It's more than what we have on the flyer. So just stick and stay with us. So SNM Abra Dra is a bold and versatile young lady. She's also passionate. She's also a passionate mental health advocate, speaker, writer, entrepreneur, and YouTuber. She was born in Ghana 
becoming the firstborn of two children and raised by her parents in Accra, Ghana, West Africa. She holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in French and Linguistics from the University of Ghana. A committed Christian, she considers her faith as an important factor in her progress in her mental health journey after she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder in August 2015. Months prior to her diagnosis, she suffered from a broken heart and experienced continuous rejection from her boyfriend at the time. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> this resulted in an avalanche of emotions like guilt, suicidal thoughts, and fear, which overwhelmed her constantly and which may have triggered this mental health condition. As a third year student in the university at the time, she was no longer excelling in her academic work. Her grade point average, that's the GPA, took a sudden nosedive and the future seemed bleak to her. For an entire year, she refused to take the antipsychotic medication which the psychiatrist had prescribed for her because she was in denial. This made her condition worse. With periodic cycles of mania and depression, almost all her relationships were on the rocks. She was either so manic that she went on shopping sprees or too depressed to attend lectures, take tests or exams. And this made her fail three courses in one semester. But after listening to a road recovery story of hope on a podcast, she decided to take her medications as prescribed and attend therapy. This was the beginning of her recovery process and stabilization. In 2019, she launched her virtual bookstore, which has sold over 300 books while working as a French teacher in a primary school for her national service. Her work as a mental health advocate actively began when she joined 24 other champions in a pilot project to end the stigma surrounding mental health in Ghana. This anti-discriminatory and anti-stigmatization movement was organized by Time to Change Global UK in partnership with Christian Blind Mission and Mental Health Society of Ghana, MESOC, in 2019 March. As a trained champion, SNM has participated in many social contact events and done many speaking engagements in different locations using her lived experience to disseminate information to create mental health awareness. Unfortunately, SNM had a tasty share, sorry, she had a nasty share of stigma when she got fired from her last teaching job in November of 2019 after disclosing to a member of management that she had a mental health condition. This negative experience ran up world in her passion to tell the world about her lived experience via her own YouTube channel, Mental Health Quarters. Mental Health Quarters is aimed at reducing mental health stigma and discrimination, one viewer at a time. The channel currently has 603 subscribers with 13,684 views. So SNM made me join one of her sessions of the YouTube, um, her YouTube channel, Mental Health Quartet, and you should check it out. You should go on YouTube right now and check out that particular interview. Now to continue, with more time on her hands, she has also started writing her book titled Life with the Invisible Suitcase, a book based on her own mental health journey and, and road to recovery. As the name is an executive member of Psychosocial Africa, a grassroots mental health support group set up by and for people with lived experience of mental illness. She has, she has also worked as an executive committee member with Global Mental Health Peer Network. She represented Ghana at this network. So GMP, GMHPN is a global mental health care user organization working to ensure that the voices of persons with lived experience mental health conditions throughout the world have the platform to share their experiences, views, opinions, and perspectives in a well-established and sustainable structure. In Ghana, she worked with MESOC 
as the project coordinator from December 2020 to November 2021. During her personal time, SNM loves to read, watch movies, go to the beach, or hang out with her friends and family. So, for those of you who do not know SNM, this is her story and it's so impactful whenever she shares it. And I'm I'm really privileged to host you on this webinar. Thank you so much for agreeing to be here, SNM. Um, thank, thank you to Aquile. It's good okay. to be here. Yeah. Awesome. Great. So today we are having this session on mental health for students, and I am leaving the platform for you to go ahead. OK, so um, Akwele has said a lot about me. And I hope you guys can hear me, because it's raining at my end. And there's thunder and all that. Yes, Akwele. we can hear you. No, you can hear me, but I don't know okay. if the other audience, please can you hear? Can you text in the chat box or yes, we have to start? We can hear her. Okay. okay. Uh, so, thank you. Okay. It's great to be here. Thank you so much, Aquile, for the opportunity. And yes, I thank God for making you my roommates because it gave me the chance to be a better person. And oh yeah, you can hear me. And if you were not my roommate, I don't think I'll be here telling my story. So you have said a lot of things about me, which actually, I think I have to edit my bio. I don't want people knowing stuff about my broken heart and all that. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go and edit my bio. Okay. So, um, today we are here talking about mental health for students. And when I Aquile sent me the topic or told me about the topic. I thought mental health for students. I just, it's today that I just realized that actually maybe we could have tweaked the topic a little because everybody has mental health. And so maybe we could have, I don't know how we would have done it, but in a way for people to really understand. So I just want to start by saying that um, the way you have a physical human body, it means you have physical health, which means because you have physical health, there could be times when you will be sick, you have malaria, you have a headache, you have a cold. That's because you have physical health. And for mental health, it's the same way. Once you have a brain, you have mental health. So everybody has mental health. Everybody, every single person who has ever lived on this earth, living on this earth and will live on this earth, will have mental health. So as a, an individual, wherever you are, you have mental health. And there are days when it could be great. There are days when it could be bad. There are times too that you could it could get so bad that a doctor will actually tell you, I think you should be on medication to um, help your mental health. Or sometimes there could be a time where someone, you need to go and talk to someone and unburden how you feel so that your mental health can get better. Please excuse me, I want to clear my throat a little. Okay, so I'm back. So as I was saying, so everybody has mental health. It could be great sometimes, it could not be great sometimes. And the World Health Organization, WHO, estimates that one in four people will experience a mental health condition in their lifetime. It's not a case. It's just that they have come to realize that life can get very hard for people maybe you think oh i'm a good person i serve god i'm faithful i'm i pay my tithe i give offering like you do you think you do all the right things but something can happen to you your family member or your friend which can affect you mentally or maybe you always wanted to travel to um 
Dubai, Dubai, Dubai for holidays. You wanted to travel. And then you go there for holidays and something happens and God helped you to get a job there. And you think, oh, I'm in the most amazing place in the world where they are paying me so well. But then you start getting depressed because you are away from your family and your friends and to see someone like if you were in ghana you just pick a church and go but now you can't go and so life has changed for you or maybe you have always wanted a baby boy a baby boy you prayed for it now the baby boy has come and now you are having postpartum depression and not just as a woman it could be your husband who is experiencing postpartum depression because ever since you gave birth you have given all your attention to this baby who was supposed to be a bundle of joy and an addition to their family. So what I'm saying is that good things and bad things can affect your mental health. I hope everyone heard that. Are we here? Yes, please. It feels so weird like doing a virtual um, session because usually I have these talks with them physical audience i do virtual but i think it has been a very long time so the way everybody is quiet i'm like hey am i are the people there or they are not there but once you are still present i'll continue so um as i was saying good things and bad things can affect your mental health and my story is about um how okay Peku says people are here my story was how, about how certain stresses and triggers came into my life, affected my mental health. And today I have, I'm living and managing a condition called bipolar disorder. But because Akwele has asked us to center on mental health and stress, I don't want to talk about my story too much because if I start with my story, will not finish today and i have like only hey let me be watching the time i have only 30 minutes <clears throat> aquila please be chatting me when like like about the amount of time i have left because okay. you know me i like talking <laughs> so <clears throat> so i've also been a student before and um some people would say I was academically good. Me, the person as an individual, I used to feel I used to struggle sometimes to get to where I am. What's wrong with my throat? Okay. So, guys, I had a throat infection on Sunday, which I'm still treating. That's why my throat, keep, my throat keeps doing this thing. So, I'm really sorry if I have to be drinking water. <clears throat> So as I was saying, um, so I had to struggle at times. So basically, even though this webinar is for mental health and students, like that relation, this whatever I'm going to teach you today, it will transcend into every area of your life because there's stress. Even a, a, a kid in, in kindergarten faces some form of stress. Why am I saying that? As little as they are, they are made to go to school early, learn, come home. Sometimes they even take, <clears throat> sometimes they even take exams. Sometimes they even have to do activities just to get some grades to move on to the next level. In the same way, when that student leaves kindergarten, they go to primary school. Primary school is a different jungle altogether. There are so many things. Teachers will be lashing you. You, you may be, um, you love a certain subject more than another subject. You wish you had the chance to study only that subject, but you have to take all these other subjects. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that there are stresses. There are, there's stress in every aspect of your life. Sometimes we think, oh, when I get a car, when I get a, a certain kind of house, when I live in a certain kind of country, when I live in a certain uh, estate in Ghana, like I wouldn't have any kind of stress. But there are always amounts of stress level and different levels 
of stress. And why is there stress? I'm going to define stress for you. Stress is a state of worry or mental tension caused by a difficult situation. And stress is also the human's response that prompts us to address challenges in our lives. I remember one time my psychologist was telling me that stress, we have positive stress and negative stress. Positive stress is the kind of stress that you encounter, which allows you to be serious. So for example, if you have a job interview, okay, you guys are students, so let me, let me make it, maybe you have, okay, job interview, or you have an exam or an IA, you will see that even if you were tired, all of a sudden that tiredness is worse off a little, or it's still there, but you still have the capability of learning, or you are trying to sleep. You want to sleep for maybe a certain number of hours, wake up and learn, but you are in the bed and you can't sleep. You are like you are under some form of positive stress, which means your body is trying to tell you, please don't sleep. You have to learn, you have to pass this exam for your good, the good of your family, for the good of God, for the good of everybody. And then we also have like negative stress, where negative stress is how I'll describe it is that my psychologist told me it's like having a lion chasing you every second, all day, every day. There are no stops. So mentally, there's a lion chasing you. You can't seem to get away from this lion. And it's always there. You can't get rid of it. Because you are under, imagine running around the same place for hours, for days, for weeks, for months. Your brain will get tired. And with that kind of burden and pressure, you will need to relieve yourself. Otherwise, you will not, it's it's kind of affect your physical health. That's how come people will tell you, oh, I used to work a lot. I'm a workaholic. Like some people actually pride themselves in that. Oh, I'm a workaholic. Oh, me, I like learning. Like me, when I was at SHS, I used to mind. Like I would sit down and learn for hours. Like I'm not saying it's not a good thing. It's good to learn and all that. But you should know how to strike the balance because our brain, our mental health is like a piece of paper. It's very nice very smooth very like a little bit delicate fragile so when you put too much pressure and stress it's like crumpling that piece of paper and still expecting the paper to <laughs> to look nice but it will not look nice it will actually start reflecting so even when you are trying to write on that piece of paper your your handwriting even looks crumpled so stress can affect you in a way that it actually reflects in other areas of your life so people will see you and be like wow you look really really tired or hey you are losing weight so what's going on in your life or you don't look so nice your hair looks disheveled hey when was the last time you went to the barber like your beard like it's overgrown like that's how bad stress can get and then physically too it can also affect your health, your blood pressure, your weight, like so many things, your cholesterol levels and all that. So if you want to like benefit from positive stress, there is a way. If you also want to make use of good stress, there's a way. And you should realize that stress, like I said, is there's always going to be some kind of stress in your life. It's something you cannot completely avoid. It is there for a reason, but you shouldn't allow it to become so toxic, so negative. It starts poisoning your life, your mental health. And sometimes it can stress can get so bad that even it can affect your relationships with people because when you are stressed, you are not in a good mood. You can be frustrated. You can take it out even on your finances. Like maybe you wanted, like you were so stressed and you're not in a good mood that you decided to buy something on impulse. You didn't plan to buy it. And now 
it's like you realize you made a mistake so basically what i'm saying is that stress can just it's very powerful you 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 will never realize how powerful it is until you see the negative effects on it of of it i've seen relationships that have broken because of stress one person was stressed or two people were stressed and it did not end well so um i was talking about hold on let me just grab my charger i quickly sorry Okay, so for those of you who just joined, we are still in the session with Esenam Joa, who is a lived experience mental health advocate, and she is sharing her experience with um, stress. And she just gave an example of how stress can affect even relationships. So you're yeah, welcome back, Esenam. Over to yes. You. So I'm back. How many minutes do I have left? <laughs> You have about 15. Okay. So stress for students. So as, as I was saying, so as a student, it's, it's very important to understand that the stress you are going through, there will be rewards. So like every farmer goes to the farm to go and maybe plow, sow seeds, water, like it's hard work. You put in all that and then you are expecting a harvest. In the same way as a student or you are a worker, if they are workers here, you put in a lot each day to expect results. You want results. You don't want to go and spend your day at 24. <laughs> you don't want to go and spend your day at 24 hour reading room or Baum Library or any other library in the world. You spent hours there, you skipped meals, you even didn't go for some lectures because you were trying so hard to work on a study for a course that you know you might fail in. And after putting on all that work, your results come and then it is not what you expected. It could even be worse than like you knew you thought like you knew you were expected a certain a certain kind of grade, but it was really 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 bad. That alone can be very confusing. It is quite interesting, and I just want to let you know that you should not give up. I sometimes tell people that when you fail once in an exam you were so stressed you put in all your all and then you didn't make it. it you don't have to give up at all you can always try harder try again so i'm going to use myself as an example so when i was diagnosed with bipolar disorder in 2015 like aquila said i was in a state of denial for one year so during that period of denial i was in level 300 because I was not on regular medication. I wasn't feeling very good in my mind with my mental health. So it made it difficult to learn, made it difficult to sleep, it made it difficult to sit down at lectures and actually pay attention. So I actually failed three courses. I actually failed three courses. One in my, no, three courses in the linguistics course I was taking because I was taking French and linguistics. And so when I traveled to go and do my year abroad, I decided to try something new because I knew very well that even though I have a mental health condition, I'm taking medication and I'm doing therapy and all that, it doesn't mean that stress cannot affect me or trigger a relapse or an episode. So in the same way, some of you here may feel, oh, I don't have a mental health condition, so stress cannot affect me. No, you need to be very mindful of stress because it, it, it can 
do a whole lot of damage, even without you realizing. So um, when I traveled, I decided to do certain things which were different. So I started going to the gym. I realized that when I started going for the going to the gym, it brought my stress levels down. My stress at the time was I'm in a foreign country. Um, even though I have um I have good command over the language, I'm still trying to get my way, find my way around this new environment, new food, new everything. And my other stress was that um the courses I was taking were a little bit different from what we were doing in Ghana. And so I realized that when I was going to the gym, exercising, doing a lot of aerobics, cardio and all that, it seemed to just bring the stress down. Like I realized I was sleeping well, I was eating well, I could study. And I also decided to create a timetable that was personally flexible for me. I had hours that I would go and learn. So in my hostel, our building, everything was in a building. So if you need to go and study, you actually need to walk out of your room to your classroom, which is just close by. So there's a tendency to be lazy and be like, oh, I can just study in my room. But no, I knew I had to make that effort and the discipline, go to the classroom and go and study so that I can actually do well. Then we also have um, the part where I decided that if, Maybe my grades came and I didn't do well. I'm going to challenge myself and do better. I'm not going to regret like, oh, all the time I spent. So it was just wasted and I didn't. No, 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 no. Because that, doing that is like having a pity party and getting re-stressed, which I did not want. So that was how I handled stress back then. So when I came back to Ghana, that time Aquile was my roommate. I realized that sometimes it can be very easy to say, oh, I'm staying in the room to learn. <laughs> I'm learning. But for me personally, when I stayed in the room to try to learn, I get very lazy. Even being on the bed made me feel lazy looking around because it's like my brain was used to the fact that this is your room. This is a place to sleep. This, this is a place to watch movies. This is a place to watch. This is not a place of learning. So I had to actually push myself, create my own personal timetable, and then go to the 24-hour reading room. And because I was following my personal timetable, so like I had hours when I will learn this subject from this time, this course from this time to this time. I'll take a break at this time. I'll take, go out and make a call at this time. But I knew that if I'm not strategic about that, I will learn one course more than another. And I'm that kind of person. When I love a course, I will spend time learning it, enjoying it. And the one that is challenging, I won't learn it. So that was what really, really helped me. And also, one thing I'll say about stress and mental health for students is that you have to sleep. Don't sleep according to people's timetables. So there's always this, um, there's always, so how do I say it? Most of the time, sometimes our roommates also happen to be our course mates. So you could be in your room and be like, oh, me and this person, we do nursing together. Oh, me and this person, we do biochemistry together. So when the person is sleeping, that's when you sleep. You, like you are cooking and moving with the person. Like when the person is cooking, that's when you are cooking. When the person is watching movies, that, when you do that, you are going to really, really be in trouble and stress yourself out because everybody has different levels of stress and how they deal with stress some people go to class they get everything from the lecturer it's like just goes into their mind is tattooed on their brain they can never forget it and maybe you are the type that you you get everything in class but you need to read over that day and at the end of that week and you need to test yourself go through some past questions so know yourself as a person. Know what works for you. Don't be um, sleeping according to people's 
timetables. It's very dangerous, risky. It can even make you really, really super stressed because somebody may be using a routine and a regimen which that completely doesn't work for you. Somebody may sleep for three hours in a day. The person is fine. You too, you want to go and do that three hours of sleep. Your meters don't match. The person has a different engine capacity and yours too is also very, very different. And you must learn how to de-stress. Like the way when people say, oh, I'm doing detoxification. Like I'm only drinking juices this week. You should also look at your stress levels and get rid of all that stress. Everybody, what helps them de-stress is different. So someone will tell you that me when I go to the beach and I sit there and I'm looking at the waves, it helps me relax. It helps me, it gives me, it helps me get good ideas. It just makes me happy. You maybe when you go and sit down at the beach, all you are thinking about is drowning. It just makes you scared. It doesn't, it doesn't give, it doesn't make you feel distressed. Know what works for you. Observe yourself. Know that, oh, as for me, me, I'm the type that when I'm watching romantic comedy, it makes me laugh. It makes me like it makes me so happy that by the time I'm done, i I feel like I was actually part of the characters in the movie so you should know the things that make you de-stress i have a friend who is here i don't want to mention her name she she goes for a uh, massages <laughs> at a spa quarterly to relax herself that's what works for her someone may also say that oh me um i don't have money to do massage and this self-care self-care everybody's talking about soft life what's what's what is for those who have money me i don't have money so i can't do de-stress and do self-care there's i always say self-care doesn't have to be expensive there is definitely definitely something which you can do at that season of your life maybe as a student to be able to de-stress maybe it is going to watch um a play at the Hold on, I want to lower the noise in my background. Yeah, so maybe it's watch, going to watch a play at, um, how do you call that place, Aquili? The one on campus, what's the name? Um, it was at the land. Yes, ETS Studio, maybe going to Hello, Isanam. We can't hear you again. Sorry, I muted myself. So just know what works for you. Maybe um, mm -hmm. it is not those kind of things. Maybe it's food. I always say that food can be a mood changer. Somebody can maybe make a smoothie. Thank you. Make a smoothie. Maybe eat make their own food make something that when they finish eating it makes them really really happy then another thing i would like to say is celebrate your celebrate your success in advance so one thing that puts a lot of stress on students is that after writing an exam one i first thing they do when they come out hey Number one, what was, what did you write? Hey, number two, was it A, B, or C? You know, that kind of thing, when you do that, I'm not saying, <laughs> me, personally, I don't think there's any real benefit when you do that. If you know you are already stressed out by asking those kind of questions, you are even going to put yourself in a really, really tough spot, a really stressed out position. So me, what I would like you to do is to celebrate your success in advance. Your confession is your possession. If you come out of the exam hall and already you are... The person, the person say I can hear much about stress or I can't hear much. So already you come out of the exam hall and you are already de feeling defeated. You are feeling weary and you are not saying anything positive. I can assure you you even, that stress you are feeling will maybe affect your sleep for that night or two late, two nights 
or it can affect your whole mood or your week. So learn to celebrate your success in advance. It really, really helps with your mood. We all have moods. We all have moods. We also have mood swings. We also, we all have stress. We all have different levels of stress. So you should just know what personally works for you. Maybe after exams, what you like to do is to just, maybe you don't want, you want to go over your questions. You want to know what you may be getting. Maybe don't do it. You know, you already figured out. Maybe don't do it that day. Give yourself some time and check it out later. And also, um, my final point, since Akule said I have um, some little time, learn to speak. I talked about positivity, but also acting positively. When you are stressed, like you feel stressed, recognize that stress. Don't try to deny it. Like, oh, me, I'm not stressed out. I can never be stressed. Like, when you are stressed out, take some time off. Just acknowledge and recognize it that what are we doing about the stress? It's like when you are sick, you are having an, a headache. You know, oh, maybe I have to drink water to help me. I need to do this, take some painkillers or whatever. When you are also feeling stressed, recognize it. Don't ignore it because stress is something that when you try to deflect, it's like you push it away. It will come back and it will come back stronger. So when you feel stressed in your life, it is there. Acknowledge that, okay, this is, I'm stressed. And the A, B, C, and D are the things I do whenever I am stressed so that I can, later on after doing all these things, I can feel distressed. And please, let's not also forget the power of um, sleep. In this our world of everybody, every time on their phone and all those things, you can, if you are not careful, you really, really not prioritize your sleep, especially as a student. Students will tell you, oh, I have to go for lectures at this time, and then I have to go for group studies, and then I have to go here, I have to do this, I have to do that. Know yourself, because when you break down, you are breaking down on your own. And as a student, this season of your life will not last forever. So why don't you do the things you need to do to make sure you are healthy, strong, and successful before moving to the next season of your life? And also, don't allow anybody to stress you. Learn to say no. It is very important as a student, or even if you are not a student, you are a worker, whatever level you are in life, please learn to say no. It's becoming a very bad habit most of us like acquire. We feel when we say no, we feel bad, and we think we are making the people we are saying no to feel bad, or they won't call us again, or they were there for me, and now that they need me, I'm not deaf. You know, don't feel bad, like guilty, when you have to say no, when actually it's the right thing to do. Maybe you are a student, you have so much to learn and your friends want you to go, like all of you to go and hang out somewhere. You know in your heart of hearts, you cannot go. But because you want to be a good friend in quotes, you say, okay, I'll follow you guys. I'll, I'll follow you guys to buy, go and buy clothes somewhere. You know you are going all the way to maybe Makola, you are going to walk, walk, walk around, talk back in the bustling, the shopping, all those things. By the time you come back to campus, you are one stressed soul, and then you start blaming yourself. And then when the grades come, you start blaming God. Maybe it didn't come through for you. So please learn how to say no when you need to say no because it's the number one stressor of people's lives people don't know how to say no at all and also when somebody in your life happens to be so toxic you know this person is like a stressor their human being themselves is a stressor in your life know how to deal with them there are some times sometimes in my life where i have had to cut people off because they stress me and i'm not priding myself in saying oh i'm happy i cut them off but it was the right thing to do for my life because by having such people around, 
as an individual, I wasn't going to grow. And there have been times where I have, maybe I'm doing some counseling with someone and I'm realizing that this situation is beyond me. I'm, I want to hand them over to someone else to handle. Or, and I realized that this person doesn't understand that I'm trying to help and I want the best for them and they want to just stress me out. I'll just explain to you that, please, it's very necessary for both of us because I'm a human being. One thing stress does is that you, you, you can accumulate stress and it can be burdensome for you. And maybe you don't even realize it, but later on, the consequences and effects come when you are sick and now it's a whole dramatic situation learn to to make sure that if someone is stressing you out know how to deal with it maybe you know how you spend time with the person or talk to the person oh in fact whenever you do this or you say this it, it really stresses me out and also learn to do a lot of breathing exercises sometimes when people are stressed all they need to do is to just relax breathe in breathe out relax themselves because sometimes maybe your stress could even trigger a panic attack just relax be aware of your surroundings and know that you are deeply loved by god and everything is going to work out well adole i sorry i said adole Akwele, i hope it's i can end now yes you can this has been a very interesting session and uh, I have personally learned a lot. You mentioned that the stress that students go through usually come with re rewards. And so stress should not be automatically be relegated as a negative thing, but it can come with rewards. And so as a student, you have to learn how to go through it. And you also gave ways to go through it through using breathing exercises, learning how to say no when you need to say no, and avoiding stresses, knowing shadows that work for you and working with it, and also learning how to distress as an individual. Thank you so much for sharing these wonderful tips with me. If there are any questions in the session, in the audience, there's a the time to share the experience. So SNM is, as I mentioned in the introduction, she is a very well-learned, and an authority in the mental health industry so she can answer your questions whether you're a student or not if you have any question about mental health or any of the things she mentioned this evening during this session kindly put it out you can either put it in the chat session or raise your hand and i would call you yes so any questions from the audience Okay, so while we are getting questions from audience, Esinam, I have a question for you. Okay. Um, you mentioned that, oh, that's a question. So I'll, I'll ask mine and then I'll read yours, Nathaniel. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that when people are stressing you, as people who are stressors for you, um, you have to avoid people like that. How do you do that? Because there are some kind of relationships you you definitely need a person and the person also needs you. And even though the person is stressing you, you need each other to progress. So how do you actually do that? Okay. So let me state, let me explain it more. So in every human relationship, there's going to be some level of stress. Do you get it? There's always going to be stress there. Like, even, even if you are living with the person you, you love the most in the whole wide world, the human you love the most, there's going to be some level of stress. Because it's just like human uh, humanity. Like, we are not perfect. So I'm not saying that when you leave this webinar, anybody who stresses you, in fact, cuts them off. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that 
sometimes you just need to have a conversation with yourself and you have a conversation with that person before you make any like any decision so maybe um for you aquile maybe you stress me out when you ask me to do things that i cannot do and i've never really told you about it before but i've just been keeping it within that alone is a stress because it's just like you feel like it's on your heart you don't want to say it's like if i say it i'll ruin the relationship so let me just and then one day you get, i get so angry and then it just comes out hey you are quickly that's how you why this 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 so sometimes it's just you ask yourself this level of stress is this something that is bothering me is this something that i can handle is this something that uh, I can live with. Is this something that no, like <laughs> it's a, a like a deal breaker? You have to just know because we can't expect everybody to be perfect. Do you get it? So there are some stress levels that we can completely ignore. So for example, you give birth and you have to feed your baby in the night, whether you like it or not, you have to wake up at certain hours to do that. It's a little bit of stress, but you can't have a conversation with your child and say, look here, like, I need to sleep. So how am I going to survive? Survive? Like, I don't know, but you are just worrying. You can't have that kind of conversation. And there are some kinds of conversations you can't have with certain kinds of people because it will not change them. So maybe you have a boss, a very annoying boss for that matter, who pays you very well, but stresses the hell out of you. I've had friends who have had to make the decision between money and an annoying boss some have stayed with the annoying and annoying boss they have just learned how to deal with him and live with him some two are like nah this level of stress is like affecting my health i'm living some to tell you oh, this course i have a friend who one time decided not to um take a particular lecturer's course because of the stress he put on him. When I say stress, I don't mean like a lot of schoolwork, but it was um, sexual, what, how should I call it? He was harassing her sexually. It was a huge stress for her. So she dropped the course completely just because she wanted to move on in her life in university. That was something she wanted to do. She could have done someone else wouldn't have been able to do it. So you need to analyze situations. Don't leave this webinar and say, oh, now I have a stress meter. When you you are uh when you reach stress level 10 on my you are I cut you off. No, you just need to understand and like analyze situations, know yourself. Some there are some stresses you can never get rid of. Some you just have to learn to live with them, adapt. Some people you can talk with them, they'll say, Oh, I was working somewhere like that. They told oh, we'll close early, we'll close early. We closed early for a couple of days after that. We went back to the old system of closing very late. So sometimes conversations don't change people. Sometimes you need to adapt, sometimes you need to develop strategies on how you can manage your stress so that they are happy, you are happy. Yeah. Okay. I All hope right, I answered you. your question. Yes, you did. And yes. thank you for that suggestion to adapt and then look at ways where we can both, I mean, meet on one level and both, um, neither of us will be at a disadvantage. Um, so let's take your question, Nathaniel. Okay, so how would someone stop being addicted to a particular behavior, especially issues ah. of sex? How will someone stop being addicted? I saw the question. Can I see the question again? Okay, I saw it in the last session. So, oh, Nathaniel, would you like to elaborate on this? Yeah, I think he should. Okay. Okay. Okay, so how would someone stop being addicted to a particular behavior, especially issues of sex? Someone being addicted to a party i'm trying to understand but the understanding is not standard 
Natalia, can you please hear me? Is he here? Hello? Yeah, hello. I'm 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 here with all of you. Okay. Okay, okay so ahead. yes, yes. And my question is, you know, uh, there are so many people struggling with issues of um, masturbation and sometimes after masturbating they feel so much um, inferior of themselves and this is also a major um, aspect as far as our mental health is concerned so I was asking if there is a way that those people going through those things can, can break the addiction okay so with addiction Addiction is different for everybody. So okay. someone um, can be addicted to maybe drugs and then easily stop. Somebody too can be addicted for to the same drug, but it could be for years. And with sex, sex too is like that. Someone can be addicted to masturbation maybe just for a while and then never do it again somebody too can be addicted for probably the rest of their life so i sometimes addiction is described like like it's a disease in a sense that people may have to live with it for the rest of their life some too if they work towards it they do something about it that you can actually get rid of it so if you are someone who you have discovered that, oh, I'm addicted to masturbation. Maybe it's time to seek help. Seek help in a sense that maybe you have tried your way. Someone may say, oh, I've realized that when I watch movies with sex scenes, then the urge to masturbate comes. Then the person will say, oh, but when I don't watch movies like that, I'm fine. But the person will later realize that it's not even the movies that brings the edges. Like, they are just there and then it comes. You should definitely, definitely go and seek help. And when I say help, you can always see a psychologist or a counselor or your pastor or somebody that you know can help you. I think on campus we have uh, Aquiles, you know, the Counselor and Placement Center. They, they can oh, yeah. help you. Yes. Okay. Yes, they can help you. There are people, there are professional counselors who can help. And I always say that there's nothing wrong in talking about what's your addiction because addiction is something that if you do not deal with it, it eats you up. And by the time you realize, it's like a cancer. It starts spreading to other healthy areas of your life. So maybe because of masturbation, you cannot socialize with people because of masturbation you isolate yourself because of masturbation masturbation can have a healthy relationship with a girlfriend or a boyfriend so it's very important that addiction to like for example their sexual behavior i can't give you one way that if you do this their addiction will go away the reason why i'm saying that is addiction is very strong very very strong it's something that to break it requires so many things it's like a chain you are trying to cut it like a metallic chain you are trying to cut it as you are cutting it it seems to be joining together so with addictions it requires like multiple stuff to do so for example let me give you an instance so, so for example for people who are addicted to probably hard drugs what sometimes they go through is that they are sent to a rehabilitation center when they are sent there they are taken off they are not allowed to take the drugs at all and sometimes such people have withdrawal symptoms in the sense that as they are not taking the the drugs they are addicted to it feels like they are dying they are suffering and sometimes the people who are taking care of them have to give them their drugs in lower doses so that their bodies can adapt to it. I'm not saying that you no know, somebody should go and do it too, but I'm just telling you that those that's just what works for set that kind of addiction. With this kind of sexual addiction too, it requires speaking to someone. 
And also the word of God also really helps. It's able to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. So if you are going through something like this or someone you know is going through something like this, it's best to see somebody to pray with you, speak with you, so that you can start a new life. Because if you do not do anything about it, it will always be lingering there and affecting you. I don't know if my answer helps too. It's, it's actually helping a lot. Okay. Okay. And also, um, I think doing confessions also helps. Um, so you can write on a piece of paper, put it on your wall. When okay. you wake up every morning, I refuse to be addicted. I'm not addicted to so, so, and so. I am free. I am liberated. I am not going to do this and this. It's like it sends an automatic message to your brain, your mind, your heart, your soul, your spirit to agree and correspond and collaborate that from now onwards, we are not doing this again. I'm not I'm not going to say, oh, tomorrow when you do it, no, the addiction is broken. It takes time for, for an addiction to develop. It takes time to develop in the same way when it's going away, it takes some time for it to go away. Yeah. And my friend wrote a book. Um, it's called um, what is the book? Uh, I'm looking at my bookshelf, but he wrote a book. I think I'll send a picture to Akwele. Akwele just remind me. He used to masturbate and he's free to do. And he shares his story on how you can be free to. Yes. So Akwele remind me. All right, sure. So while you check for the book. There's another question in the chat. And Estina Ando asks, please, is there any difference between being stressed and being under pressure? Please, um, after this question, Ketura has his, his or her hand up. Um, and Estina's Ketura question. Is my friend. I don't oh, know if she wants to lady. respond. Ketura, is it the addiction that you want to comment on? Or is it a completely different question? Ketura. Okay. She hasn't responded. Okay. So being stressed and being under pressure. I think that hmm, this thing, when I hear it, I think it's just, should I say, language in choice of words. For example, um, when I was in Holy Child Senior High School, we used to say, uh, don't stress me. Don't stress me. Don't stress me. It may mean also to someone, hey, you are putting me under pressure and I'm under pressure. So I don't really know whether being stressed and being under pressure, there's a difference because it's basically, I think they fall under the same umbrella because when you are stressed, you are under pressure. And when you are under pressure, there's a high possibility you'll be stressed. I don't know if that makes sense, Ernestina. Please, did I answer your question? Ernestina. Yes, please. Oh, my answer is no good thing. <laughs> yes. It's okay. It's okay. I'll just say uh, when, you, when you go, you can check on um, Google to find out because right. that's I don't know but that's what I think uh, thank it's you right. or oh, is she there Honka I've now remembered the book so Akwele we can move to the next question okay there is a hand in the queue. Um, do in Syria events. Your hand is up. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Um, I just joined. I want to find out. You see, this time we are promoting self care, okay? And then, um, what's the difference between self care and being selfish? You see, some people maybe. 
they would have to do something. And then you see, maybe today you have to run an error for your mom or something you have to sacrifice for a relationship or something. And the person will be like self-care, everyday self-care. Every day, you see, it is affecting a lot of things. So I want to find out the difference between self-care and then being selfish. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for your question. So when you are being selfish, it means that you are not caring about anybody but yourself. And it's usually used in, an, in a, a disapproving way, which means it's negative. But with self-care, that is the positive in the sense that you are taking time to take care of, of yourself and not at the expense of other people. So I'm going to give you a scenario. Maybe you are a mother. You have children. You have to take them to school, bath them, get, prepare their breakfast, whatever. Then you say... You tell your husband, today, self-care. I'm not doing any of those things. It's You have to do everything. That is a little bit selfish in the sense that you did not give your husband prior notice. You did not tell anybody this, what you were planning to do. You are just taking time, like, just like that. When you are going to do self-care, self-care, it requires you letting the people around you, the people normally come to you, for your services or for your help, know that at this time, I will not be available so that it doesn't look like you are selfish. So for example, if um, I have to travel tomorrow and somebody needs me to do something, I would have told the person like maybe a week or something before that, look, I'm traveling on this day, so I'm sorry I will not be able to do this for you because I need to take time for myself that you are taking care of yourself and you are also taking care of the other person because you are giving the person prior notice. But in a case where somebody like they are trying to be selfish or escape one activity or another, then they use self-care as the banner on their head. That one day you are being very selfish. So self-care is, we use it in an, an approving way. We are not trying to promote oh, everybody be, be uh, self-care, self-care, so be selfish. No, self-care, but also take into consideration the people around you. It's like the way people say soft life, soft life. Hey, I'm the soft life president. I always tell people that, look, I don't think soft life is a bad thing to say because in this world, even the Bible, God, Jesus says in this world, you will have trouble. But Jesus also says in some parts of the Bible that I will be with you to the end of age. So please have a good time. Enjoy your life. Do the right thing. That in a way is soft life to me. It does, soft life doesn't mean that there will be no trouble. There will always be trouble one way or another, lacking somewhere. But it doesn't mean that having a soft life or captioning your picture soft life means you are not aware of the trouble that may be around. I hope I answered your question, though. Yeah, thank you. Are you sure? Because if I didn't answer it well, we can always talk about it. Oh, I'm okay. I'm okay because this time is becoming too much. It's like people, I just want to be sure if, mm. I mean, so if even a 19 no more. Thank you. Yeah. Sometimes people just want to change a good thing into a bad thing. So, for example, there's this movement going around that body positivity, body positivity, which means love yourself and love your body, the body God that gave you. Someone to also post a naked picture of themselves and put it on social media and tell you that is body positivity for them. Do you get it? Mm. Uh -huh. So it, sometimes people just try to see the world through their own lens, but forgetting that we are all seeing the same world at the same time too. Thank you. Aquile, it's Aquile. All right. I believe that is the end of our question and answer session.
and that is the end of this particular it show. has their hand raised okay um Ketura, can you hear us now please please hello we can hear you Ketura. okay Yes, um, please, I would like to throw more light on uh, what Islam said about Nathaniel's question on sexual addiction. Uh, with regards to any form of addiction or... With regards to sexual addiction in itself, you can habit or you can try and manage the situation. First of all, you need to ask yourself why. Why do you engage in this sexual um, activity? It could be for maybe childhood experiences or childhood traumas that you went through. It could also be the availability of a partner or say there's this uh, a student, maybe there's this lady who comes to my room or there's this guy who comes to my room and we seem to like each other, and so um, we, we engage in sexual activities. So that has to do with the why. So you first need to know why these edges come up. Or um, maybe you are addicted to pornography, or maybe you are addicted to sexual movies, or maybe addicted to um, uh, these, yes, these sexual movies. And so that's how come you have those feelings for sexual activities. So you need to ask yourself why or what is the cause of uh, this addiction. And then once you're able to identify why or the root cause of the sexual addiction, then you now come to what are the consequences of this sexual addiction. So as you mean I'm, I'm engaged in a sexual activity, what are the consequences of, of me engaging or me getting addicted to sex? then the consequences will be you changing or you having multiple sexual partners, uh, you contracting an STI, um, you contracting HIV, you having uh, or, or um, having an unplanned pregnancy and all those things. So you need to consider the the consequences of your action then once you're able to consider the consequences of your actions then you move on to how you can stop it actually because if the consequences of your actions are not desirable then you need to start weighing your options that even though i derive pleasure from these sexual activities these are the consequences that are there so i need to uh, be able to take care of myself or be able to keep that consequences. I'm sure with time, once you consider the consequences, you consider what really is the root cause of your sexual addiction and you tackle it up, you'll be able to uh, stop this addiction. And again, you also need to see a therapist. There are people who are, pay, who are being paid to, to take you through counseling or to take you through uh, therapy sessions with therapy sessions they not only take you through counseling but they give you activities to do so if let's say you, uh, they give you an activity to do say um for the next one week or for the next two weeks try to reduce your sexual activity to say two or three times a week then but you are breaking the sexual activities and with time you will be uh, able to hello please is that okay yeah i can hear you yes i can hear you is that okay hello Yes, so I was saying that you need to also consider therapy sessions for, you know, um, Ketira, we can hear you, but realize that, that it's breaking. 
the, we had that the part where you say maybe you'll be giving activities and then to your sexual activities you monitor how they are yes doing, yes uh, we, yes yes uh, All right, thank you so much, Ketura. We can barely think, hear you. Ernestina has her hand up. Yes, Ernestina, we'll take the last uh, input from Ernestina and, and then we'll call it a night. You still keep your, your, your cell phone to keep that. I am having so uh, pardon me with my voice, but I hope it's okay. Yeah. Hello, hello, Katie. Are you back now? Hello, Katie. Can you hear me? I think she has ended her point. Okay. And Estima was actually speaking. I didn't hear yes. the beginning. Yes, so we yeah. take the last one from Estima. Okay, so I'm just saying that I have a so I hope it's okay. Yeah, I had I have then I couldn't hear the rest. Yeah, I'm having code. Okay. Yeah, so the voice wouldn't be that clear, but I hope you actually get what I'm about to say. Yeah, sorry about your cold. <clears throat> Aquile. Yes, um, and Estina, can you hear me? Oh, she, she yeah, tried hello. writing in the chat box because I did, I barely heard anything. Okay. Yeah, hello. Yes, and Estina, can you hear me yeah, now? Please, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, we can hear you clearly now. You can go ahead. Okay, so I have two questions. Uh, one is regards to school. So I have this friend in school. Uh, whenever she comes to campus, before you even stress her or something causes her to be stressed out, she's already stressed. So you ask her something, like she brings all stress onto you, like she just transfer it. And that has actually affected her relationship with a lot of people. So it got to a time that she was not even speaking to the whole class. Mm. So I want to know in the first place that is this whole stress or can it uh, be in relation to the genetic makeup of a person that maybe naturally that is how the person is like, I don't know. And if that is it or not, I would want to know how best uh, myself or as a class we can help her because it's it's really affecting her, and it, in the first place, she's not even uh, realizing that it's a problem for her. So okay. I don't know. Yeah. So that's my first question. I don't know if you can answer this, and I bring the second question, or I should just ask okay. that. Let me answer this quickly. So, right. um, when it comes to stress, I do not know. You know. People, they'll tell you that mental health conditions before they develop they are factors they will not tell you the cause they don't know the cause but they will tell their factors like environmental factors and genetic factors genetic factors in the sense that oh maybe someone from your family had schizophrenia or you people mm -hmm. a whole generation of people have had bipolar disorder or then we have the environment, environmental factors where things happen that stress and trigger the person to develop a condition. So with your friend's situations, I believe underneath all that masking everything up, 
bottling everything up. There could be something going on underneath which mm -hmm. is causing that outbursting. That's, I believe there's a root cause to this problem. For all you know, mm -hmm. maybe she's dealing with a lot personally or at home or financially or she doesn't have any friends or somebody betrayed her. You know, sometimes people mm -hmm. say, I have trust issues, so I have trust issues. How did this person come to have trust issues? Something definitely happened before this person got trust issues. So before you develop a relationship with this, your classmates to try to support it, you need to reach out. And reaching out is different for everybody. Everybody responds differently. You have to get to know this person, be a friend to this person. And who is a friend? A, some, a friend is someone who knows you as you are, understands mm -hmm. where you have been, accepts who you have become, and still gently invites you to grow. And that was a quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson. So you can't just say we want to we want to help her, and a few of you attempts it didn't go well. Everybody goes. It's a, a collective effort, and it takes mm -hmm. time. It takes time. You can't expect, oh, one of you befriended today. By next week, she'll be fine. Whatever has happened for her to become like this, it will also take time for her to heal and grow out of it. So just start with friendship. Before okay. uh, Aquila and, <clears throat> so and I were roommates, we, are, we were not just roommates. Our relationship developed from roommates to friends and then to some, some fourth form of sisterhood, mother daughter <laughs> relationship, something <laughs> like that. And these things, okay. if it's communication to develop such a relationship, you can't say that you are somewhere in a relationship and it will work out. How will it work out? It starts with communication. So you need to develop your communication with this person. Try okay. to be the person's friend. Get to know what's really going on. And you don't start day one. Okay, so I'm a, what's going on in your life? No. You just put the person off immediately. Start with okay. normal things. Things that both of you can talk about or thrive on. Like, just discuss. You don't go straight to the point. Because people like that, they are hiding a lot of pain okay. within them. And the last thing they want is for somebody to come and know what's going on in their life. So how would they let go? It's by you reaching out and developing friendship, letting them know whatever you are going through, I'm also going through. I may not understand fully what you are going through, but I just want to let you know that I'm here for you. Do you get okay. it? And with sure, time, sure. be fine. These things happen. Things happen. I mean, some of my classmates from school, now when they look back and now they've seen how I'm doing well and I'm successful. Now, some of them are like, oh, when we're in uni and you were going through your mental crisis, I wish I was there for you. I wish I had understood. And I'm like, you had a chance, but the time yeah, is yeah. Not. So Whatever time or season you are in and you can help this person, do your best. Even if you can't finish helping this person, at least you have sown a seed in a person. Someone else is going to water it. Someone else is going to harvest it. Just try your little okay. best, it will go a long way to help the person. And now your second question. Okay, so with my second question in regards to parenting, you know, let me take myself for an example. I might be going through a lot of stress and all that. It will be very hard for my parents to understand that this child of ours is going through this kind of stress. So maybe, oh, I'm supposed to do this. Meanwhile, I'm going through a lot. That may be I don't want to share or I don't have that boldness to talk about it. So I'll be like, oh, mom, please, can I do this later or something? I, I really need time for this. They will not understand. So it will be like I'll just do the thing before because I will, I, they are yeah, forcing please. me to do it. And at the end, I'll be angry. That will even increase the stress I was having. So how then do I manage such? Hmm. So we all have African parents. And I don't know <laughs> if you see funny pictures and videos on social media. 
about African parents. African parents, they are very, very, and very soon one day we will be African parents, whether we like it or not. So for when you tell an African parent that you are stressed, they find it very hard and difficult to believe that you are stressed because I gave you everything. Now you have grown up to be successful. So when I say come and sweep, I don't understand why you are telling me you are stressed. Because I made life easy for you. Me, do you know the stress I went through? You are come to compare my stress to your stress. <laughs> so it's a, a, like a difference in generation and worldviews and concepts. So how they see the world is not how we see the world. And so the, I have those kind of issues with my parents who from time to time and then you go and do the thing, you'll be pissed off. Like, you are not the only one that is going through that. We all go through that in our house. It's just that we don't come and talk about it. Yeah. But you just have to understand that it's a season. It's not going okay. to last forever. You will not, like... Right now, it's raining in my area. It's not going to rain sad for the rest of my life. Definitely, <laughs> the rain is going to stop. Then the sun will come out. Then Hamata will come. Then it will, the weather will change and there will be summer. There will be winter. There will be spring. So in the same vein, this season that you are in, me, what, that's what I used to encourage myself, that this season I'm in with this African parent who doesn't want to understand me. <laughs> it's just for a while. One day, I'm going to have my own place. And when I say I'm stressed, <laughs> I'm going to be the boss. So it's just a matter of like realizing that it's going to be a little difficult for them. Like Just understand. The world they are coming from is different. So when you say stress, it's different. Even as a mental health advocate, when I meet older people and I'm talking to them about these kind of things, most of them believe it's spiritual. There's no science behind what I'm saying. So there are always going to be people like that who will never see eye to eye with you. Even our lecturers, a lecturer will give some plenty assignments and then come <laughs> and give plenty assignment later. And doesn't, <clears throat> doesn't understand why a student will say will be stressed. They don't understand. They feel like, ah, is that not why we are in this school? We are here to learn. Mm -hmm. And they forget you have other courses to learn. They feel someone made a joke that they think their course is the only course we are learning in this school. So it's just how sometimes the African parent syndrome is like. So I mean, sometimes okay. I, I will just tell you that me, I'll do the thing later. Just don't call me again. <laughs> so, <laughs> Come and call you again. Just endure, 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 endure. All right. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. If you don't want to be called again, just do it for peace to prove it. <laughs> and it, it, it's like I work with you, you work with me. We have we are a team, dream team. I know people who are in relationships. I no, I saw this picture on WhatsApp today. The person said, "Everybody will say, I'm not the type. To, I'm not the type to be calling. I'm not the type to be texting. I'm not the type to be to be taking you out." Then it goes like, "Was Jesus the type to be dying? He wasn't the dying type, but he came to die. So we should all learn to be the things that we say we are not. We should all learn to be that type." Okay, thank you. <laughs> we should all learn to be that type. And with that, we are ending today's session. Thank I you all. Or oh, she has forgotten. Uh, up again. I wanted to add on to what you said uh, regarding Ernestine's uh, comment about her friend. Um, one thing that it I would like you to have a deep you are breaking on has to do with whether you have the mental space for your friend.
is still breaking. You need to ask yourself whether you have that mental space for your friend. As you mean, your friend is. Hello. Yeah, it keeps breaking. Is it better now? Yeah, it's yeah. better. Hello. Aquele, are you there? It better. Okay. So I was saying that you need to ask yourself whether you have that mental space for your friend. Okay. Hello. Hello, Ketua, are you done? No, can you hear me? All right, we are hearing you, but we are experiencing a line breakage at your end, and it's affecting how um, well we are able to follow you through. But I believe you can also type what you want to share in the chat session. We'll be patient to wait till you are done typing, and then we'll read it out for everyone to hear. So, um, thank you all so much for joining the session. Um, we are waiting for your comments, Ketira. Akwele. Yes, um, listen up. This is the book I was talking about. It's okay. called Konka. But I'm sure it will appear, like, on the yeah, reviews. Yeah, can it's... It. I'll send you a picture. Yes, I'm sure you know Nilante, so I don't yes. know. Um, Nathaniel, Nathaniel I think you can... Is he on everything. campus? Is Nathaniel on campus? Nathaniel, if you can hear, can you please respond? You can unmute your microphone and then respond. Yeah, hello. Yes, I was trying to find out if you are on campus um currently i am not on campus but then i communicate with so many people on campus oh okay yes. i will find out from neil and say if he could get me a copy and then if aquila is in contact with you i could get you a copy um i don't know the aquila you are talking about i just joined okay, um nathaniel i'm the one talking um, okay Yes, this Aquile. Please, are you on the Vista Edu community page? No, please. Okay, sure. So I'll share the link to the community page here so that you can join. And once you join, all the other materials that has been communicated here, it will give you easy access to it. And okay. yeah. All right. Can you hear me? Yes, please. I can. Yes. Um I hope you heard everything I said. Yes, I did. Yes, all right, sure. So I'm going to put the community link over here for you to join. Um, Ketura, if you, uh, we are still waiting for your comments. We have not forgotten about you at all. Yes, um, all right. So we'll share the picture to the book and then that would be, I'm trying to share the link right here. Yes, so it's in the chat session now. Okay. Yes, so kindly join the WhatsApp page and we'll communicate from there. Okay. All right, sure. So SNM, this has been really wonderful. This has been one of the sessions that we have really enjoyed and all the participants have been with us from start to finish. And I'm really excited about that. Ketura is saying you need to ask yourself if you have the mental space for your friend or whether you are safe, you are a safe space for her. If you are not a safe space for her, how can she confide in you? Okay. Okay. So, so I um I think Ernestina was saying that it was a class situation. So that's why I kept on saying whoever like can try to help can do that. But um, like Tura is saying, 
if you are not a space for her, how can she confide in you? So basically, it's like if you yourself you are you have drama going on and you you are not even seen top, please don't try <laughs> to <laughs> bring somebody's case upon yourself because sometimes cases can get like entangled like you think oh you wanted to help this person to stop like, you thought you could help this person but the deeper and deeper you go you realize it's more complicated than you thought so and i see now if you 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 guys start communicating with your friend and you realize that it's a situation which is beyond your capacity maybe you guys should talk into seeing a professional like um see a counselor or talk to someone like professional because those people are actually trained and skilled to help and answer certain questions so for example if you go to the uh, the swimming pool who would you want to uh, help you when you are drowning is it just some fellow swimmer who is drinking a beer or you want a lifeguard you definitely want a lifeguard to help you so sometimes when you start setting things with someone and realize it's beyond your capacity, just admit that you are not trained for it. There's no, no you did your best, but try to hand the case over. Okay, thank you. So yeah. I think this conversation can be continued. So Issa, now can you share your details with us in the chat session? And also share link to mental health courses on YouTube so that our patients can also subscribe to your YouTube channel to grow it in as well as to learn more about mental health because this advocacy has really inspired a lot of people and communities and i believe um, we can continue this conversations over and over again because as she rightly said at the beginning of the session everybody has a mental health and it's up to you to dwell on whether it to be positive or negative yes yeah, so yeah. i believe this session has been really insightful to us um thank you so much snm for this um session we have um we have really enjoyed your session and oh. i want to see if you can hear if we can see my screen yes shoot us a review with interact with our socials okay um all right sure yes yeah. so this particular slide is a recording of the previous webinar we had in March, it was on this topic, what I wish I knew before starting the tech journey. It was, it was a very powerful session. There was so much conversations about the tech field and how anyone could enter the tech field. I'm also from a biochemistry background into the tech field. And so it was really um, a refresher for me to understand how other people also grew from um from wherever they started to the tech field and anyone who wants who is interested in being a techie you would find this session very helpful i've shared the link to our youtube channel in the chat box so i'll share it right now again so that you can go check it out we have really impactful sessions we do on our web uh listed do webinars so we organize this webinar on the last thursday of every month at 7 pm and with the same link that you joined today which is bits.ly slash wasted webinars so i hope to see you next month and before i leave i'd like to share this stuff which is our website so we have made a change to our website and this really is an introduction to a product called Prodly. And so we want each and every one of you to sign up with your email address to join our wait list right now because um, Prodly is a platform that's going to help you with your research projects. So whether you are doing a market research for a company or you are doing your final year project as a student, we have resources that is going to make it easier for you. You come to the platform with little or no knowledge in research you come out of the platform with a research paper to show. And that is how powerful tech has evolved in the current years. 
And so kindly go online to vestaedu.com and kindly add your email address to our wait list so that we can tell investors that yes, people are actually waiting for this platform. And so even before we launch it, we know that um, there is a number of people who are excited about it and it's going to be as impactful as when it's released. Yes. So thank you all so much for joining today's session. My name is Akwele Okai, and I am the CEO and co-founder of Vista Edu. As I mentioned earlier, Vista Edu, what we do is, one, we organize monthly educational webinars for tertiary level students, one of which you are here. Two, we have a tech product which we are about to launch, which is for project work. And three, we organize career seminars for students. So if you are students here, or you want your association to be affiliated with Vista Edu for us to have a career seminar for you and your other colleagues, kindly go on the Vista Edu website and please don't forget to send us an email or to also contact us with the other contact details. You can also um, go on our social media platforms and contact us. So whichever one they are comfortable with, kindly do that. It's an I've seen your youtube channel has been dropped in the set in the link um, in the comments uh, in call messages the comment session thank you i would really entreat everyone to go on snm's um, youtube channel kindly subscribe is very important for her because it will boost her reach and more people will better understand their mental health and kindly like and comment on her videos as you watch it Thank you all so much for the session. Um, we are really grateful for your audience and have a wonderful, wonderful day. And once again, happy International Girl Day in IT 2023. <laughs> Hey, hey, I forgot to say thank you, Aquile. <laughs> thank you for having me over. Oh, don't mention it. We are honored rather to have you. Thank you. Bye. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye. Me too. Bye.